Hello and welcome to this webisode of Chai with Lakshmi. Many of us living in Indian cities are dependent on municipality supplied water and we are therefore required to also invest in rainwater harvesting. Here is a community, Ferns Paradise, that has gone one step further. They have voluntarily invested in rainwater harvesting as well as in groundwater recharge. Here's a look at how they do it and why. Residents of Ferns Paradise, a gated community in Bangalore, have taken rainwater harvesting rather seriously, incorporating a groundwater recharge system too. Here's a look at how they've done it. Joining us is water expert Shubha Ramachandran, who shares what rainwater harvesting actually is and how it works in the urban context. Rainwater harvesting as a concept is really simple. It's as simple as keeping a bucket out in your garden or on the road when it rains and catching that water and seeing how you can use it. Theoretically speaking, what we say is rain as it falls from the sky is pure. It's filtered. It's like distilled water. In the cities, there are pollutant gases that are present in the atmosphere. Some of them dissolve in this water and the water then falls on your terrace. Most houses have down pipes that bring the water down and you can then filter it. We are filtering to remove those dissolved gases and it's really very difficult to remove that that particular water. So we have a process of first rain separation where what we do is automatically or semi-automatically some portion of the water that falls on your terrace, the initial one millimeter of rain is separated out and the remaining water passes through a physical filter which is various layers of either small pebbles, charcoal, sand to remove it of the contaminants that are present, the solid particles. And this water can then be stored and used for any domestic purpose. Some of the things we have to keep in mind is it depends on how clean you're able to maintain your terrace. Are there a lot of leaves, dried leaves that fall on your terrace? There's pigeon droppings. So each of these things have to be dealt with. The water certainly is good enough for most purposes at par with groundwater, tanker waters that some layouts have to buy. Shiba, obviously the community here at Ferns Paradise has gone the extra mile. You know, they've looked beyond rainwater harvesting at an individual home level. Um, can you just share a bit about the activities and, you know, the investments they've made beyond the individual home level and why doing so might be important for communities such as these? So uh, it starts with the fact that this layout, say, spread over about 40 plus acres, has about 350 plots, and they do not have individual bore wells. So there are community bore wells, which is pumped to this overhead tank here, and then from there it's supplied to all the houses. So somewhere as a community, they've realized that these bore wells won't last forever, given the rate at which the houses are being built and water is being withdrawn in the whole area. Mm -hmm. And they've also seen a need to to get together, invest this money in sound groundwater recharge, which really means that water is intelligently put deep into the ground so that it recharges their bore well. We all are aware that there is a water uh, problem in Bangalore uh, and uh, here in this layout where we live, we are 100% dependent on ground, groundwater. There is no cavity supply for us. So I thought it is really essential for me to have a secondary source of water. So that is why we thought of uh, rainwater harvesting. Basically, uh, we collect the rooftop uh, rainwater and uh, that uh, goes through a filter and collects into a storage well uh, and the uh, overflow from that goes into a recharge well which recharges the water table. This is a fairly large rooftop. There's about maybe 150 to 200 square meters of rooftop. It's been designed very intelligently where all the sloping roof also falls onto the flat roof portion. And then all the water kind of flows down here. This is the final large downtake pipe. The water flows down from here and goes to the filter, gets filtered and is then stored in the sump. The sump is a storage unit and from where the water is pumped and used for various domestic purposes and when the sump overflows it is sent for groundwater recharge. And this was about eight years ago. I tried to uh, figure out uh, what I could do and at that point I decided I was going to do the simplest thing. Um, Again, the idea was I didn't want to sort of, you know, use these plastic pipes and uh, connect them to the roof on the side and all that. So I did an integrated channel, which is part of the building. 
every drop that falls on this structure goes into an 8,000 liter uh, sump. The rainwater from there I use mainly for growing vegetables and we have now close to 13 fruit trees just around the house and now the terrace garden so I use the water for that. Some people argue that if it just falls on your garden, say for instance, is it going into the ground, is it recharging? What we've observed is it doesn't really, it contributes to soil moisture temporarily, so it makes your ground a little greener, there's more grass that grows. But what happens is any water that's going only up to say six feet below the ground, uh, below the ground level is lost to evaporation or evapotranspiration. So when we want for water to stay deep into the ground, we need to go maybe 15 feet or deeper. And that's what contributes effective groundwater recharge. People are more and more uh, kind of living in cities now, and uh, obviously that's putting a huge strain on urban water resources. It's difficult for uh, the government to really supply enough adequate water for all uh, citizens in the urban areas. And uh, people need to understand that water is not limitless and that you know we cannot depend on the government to do uh, everything so uh, it, rainwater harvesting is the easiest thing and the simplest thing that individuals can do at their own homes to supplement the government water supply at a household level each house has its own rooftop that water is stored in the sump but every layout even if you go by the building guidelines every layout has about 40 percent of roads mm. which contributes significantly to the runoff that is the water which we've decided to filter and build these recharge wells. So the ones that we've made here are 20 feet deep and 3 feet in diameter. Okay. And each of the wells is about a 4,000 litre capacity. So that's the volume of water it can hold at any one time. But it's continuously putting water into the ground, depending on how much it rains. You can have larger wells, 5 feet diameter and 30 feet deep as well. Okay, okay. So obviously somewhere at the bottom of that 20 feet or 30 feet is a way in which the water actually then goes back into the ground. Exactly. It goes deep into the ground, not just from the bottom, but there's some percolation from the sides as well. We call it a leaky well. The rings are just placed one above the other. There's no plastering at all. So the water just percolates out from wherever it finds space.